What's up, everyone? Mark Lobliner, CEO, MTS Nutrition. Hit high intensity interval training. Should it be done on your off day from training? To that I say, well, it depends. High intensity interval training is straining on your central nervous system. It is very, very needy on your system, meaning it requires a lot on your system to actually go at a super high percentage of VO2 max, even for a set point in time, even for a low amount of time. If you only do them for 10 seconds a sprint, but you do it for only four minutes, say you do Tabata, that's demanding a lot of your body. Now, recovery days aren't just to let your muscles rest, it's to let your joints rest, let your nervous system kind of rest and recover, it's to kind of get your grips on the world. And also just to say, hey, I'm gonna chill the fuck out today, right? So what happens is, some people will get overzealous, including myself. I've done this probably 800 times in my career as a mediocre professional bodybuilder. Whereas I will take my off days, which would be only one to two days a week, and do high intensity interval training. High intensity interval training, if you're only doing four to five days of weights, or if you're doing what I like to do with my clients is I like to do Tabata on non-leg days, which is usually two to three times a week, that's great. However, there's three ways to do cardio in my opinion. There's low intensity, steady state, there's medium intensity, steady state, and there's high intensity interval training. Low intensity, steady state is essentially walking. What I like about that is it does not damage your, it is, does not strain your nervous system. However, it will help speed up recovery by delivering nutrients because you're basically passively getting blood flowing through your body. That's one. Number two, is medium intensity steady state. I never do that unless it's for someone who has to do it for, the, for their sport. Soccer players, they have to jog. Baseball players, not as much. Baseball players, I'll stick on hip most of the time. However, hockey players, they need miss. But for those of you after body composition changes, I don't even do this, <clears throat> break it off. No need for miss, because it cuts into recovery, but it doesn't have enough performance benefits for me to recommend it to increase your performance. High intensity interval training, it increases your performance, absolutely. Elicits some of the same hormonal responses as weight training. However, it's not recovery. It's actually gonna require recovery. So that's why if you're having a complete off day, I recommend you just do low intensity steady state and do something that I call pillar prep. And I've done many videos on pillar prep. You can search it, pillar prep, low blinder on YouTube. I've done many videos on pillar prep and I really like doing that. However, for you guys, if you are looking at body composition changes and you are not an athlete who has to do missed cardio or medium intensity steady state during your sport, by all means, do high intensity interval training. Maybe if you train weight, tra let's, say you weight let's put it in an application. Say you weight train four days a week. Let's take two of those off days, one or two, and do high intensity interval training. Make sure you have one complete off day a week. On that day, do low intensity steady state. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this. So should you do hit cardio on rest days? The answer is if it's an actual rest day, no. And that's not a game.